Hello, everyone, and welcome to Two Money Talk Games. This is episode one. I'm live on Twitch.tv. Got T underscore money thirty three to bring the latest games and discussions on the broader games industry. You can call us with shows live via Discord. You can text them to Discord in the chat or scrolling below on and clicking the phone. Now, today we got a very large. at it, some interesting news, as well as, you know, a, a discussion I think I really want to have. It's going to be a very interesting discussion we have today with a based off of a message I got to send and talk to somebody with about Twitter. Ooh, apparently the music was too loud. Okay, uh, note for next time. <laughs> uh, someone just sent me that. Uh, thank you so much for letting me know that. Because, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of news to me. I'm definitely going to have to uh, keep that in mind for next time. You know, this is only the second episode I've ever done, so hey, freaking audio hiccups are just a curse for me, apparently. Alrighty. So, let's, we're going to start off today with some news. We got, we got some interesting, you know, kind of news coming out of the couple of sources. We got, uh, for Nintendo, Nintendo going after somebody again. Like, that's a surprise. Today, they went after um, Pokey Princess, as she's called. She's now going uh, as Digital Princess. She was issued a cease and desist, not a lawsuit, people. A cease and desist order from Nintendo saying, stop using our stuff and stop using it to make money off of it. It's, uh, it's a cease and desist, folks. It's not a lawsuit. You know, Despite what people have said, she has not been actually taken to court. A cease and desist is very different from a lawsuit. All it says is stop doing it or we're going to, you know, actually take you to court. It is a legal threat. Do not get it wrong. Do not get con confused. But it is not an actual lawsuit. They, she has not stood in court. All she had to do was change her name. She's now Digital Princess. And apparently they, they took her money. Now, I'm kind of on the fence with this. I really don't like whenever a company says, oh, you took, you made this, you know, uh, th made this product and you're selling it and it, you know, I I'm kind of on the fence. They shouldn't have taken all the money. I don't know if that's actually what happened and I don't want to be quoted on as that is what Nintendo has done. But it, it, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's, you know, illegal. It is perfectly within Nintendo's right. Pokey Princess, you know, Digital Princess, as she is now known as, it was infringing on Nintendo's uh, legal rights. They're, what they legally hold is... In that, N Nintendo absolutely held the rights, did what they did, felt was right, and they, 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 their cases, you know, open and shut, basically. Moving on to other news today, we also have some interesting news. You know, it's kind of sad, kind of good, depends on how you take it. Uh, Speedrun.com, long the home of all of your speedrunning needs, has uh, been recently acquired. They were acquired by... Do, 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 do. LO Entertainment, best known for Dota buff. All right. So, they, you know, I, I read the Twitter. Uh, it's kind of concerning. I, I'm a bit of a speedrunner myself. I uh, primarily speedrun uh, Halo uh, Reach, and I'm actually going to be uh, picking up Star Wars Squadrons as a speed game. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun there. But the concern is, is as with anything, when a community gets acquired... A community resource gets acquired. Is it going to hurt the community or is it going to help? Now, according to one speedrunner who also moderates and manages a lot a lot, uh, portions of the site, um, not as a member of speedrun.com's, you know, sort of board of directors or whatever they have going on, but uh, moderates and manages a lot of the information going out there for the games he speedruns, uh, he says it's, it's going to be good. Uh... Hello Entertainment and Dota Buff could be bringing a lot of resources to help and address certain issues going on within the uh, site and help basically make the site a better place to, you know, access for people to do to do what they want to do, which is speedruns. It's, you know, going to probably also really help bring out the competitive speedrunning thing. Me, personally, everyone, 
you know, should have seen GDQ. Everyone loves GDQ. Uh, that's a great example of something that speedrun.com being acquired can help push forward, uh, you know, and get other games attention and get them attention and help, you know, bring the community together, make it a stronger speedrunning community. All right, that covers our news for the day. That's the, the kind of the two stories I really wanted to talk about, you know, get some correct some misinformation out there, uh, especially regarding Digital Princess, and as well as, you know, address, you know, the broader speedrunning community and say it's going to be a wait-and-see approach. It's, it's either going to go great, which I'm hoping for, or it's going to go like uh, a lot of other times when companies get acquired, it's going to go to crap. Uh, looking at you, EA. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to our main topic today, you know, um, if you don't know what, if you didn't see what the episode was called on live, it's uh, normalizing equality, and I want to uh, share a, a, t a message I uh, got to talk to uh, somebody about um, regarding, you know, um, some stuff. I, I'm not going to use their Twitter handle. I was not able to obtain permission to use it. They uh, failed to respond. Uh, and, uh, you know, for me personally, silence is not consent. Uh, and I don't want them to feel, you know, pressured. Uh, but they tweeted out, um, going into uh, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, the default character uh, was... Uh, black apparently um I, i've not played a Baldur's gate game in a long time so you know it's news to me um and i basically they said something about it and i'm like okay i i, I wanted to say it in public but i'm always afraid something especially when it comes to race is going to take it get taken out of context so the context is i don't understand why this was so you know special you know is why is it so special so i'm, I'm concerned I'm not concerned. I'm just, you know, ignorant, so to speak. Um, and it's just me failing to understand my human, however the fact. And, and, you know, again, the fact that someone feels represented is always really awesome to me. I love it when especially underrepresented uh, communities get represented in games. You know, we got people of color, uh, LGBTQ. You know, all these communities very rarely get represented. It's always, you know, a, a white protagonist, generally male, and, and they're angry about something else, and so they're going to go kill everybody in their path. Um, and so I reached out to them saying, hey, why is this such a big deal to you? And they said, hey, thank you. I really appreciate you reaching out. It's nice to see for once a black character being seen as the default or standard selection because it normalizes having black characters in games. A lot of times it's really hard even to even make a character look black, let alone the stock character you see being someone that looks like you. It makes me feel so represented like I can be the hero in the story. Now, when she when this person reached out to me um, on Twitter and, and responded to me, I kind of came to a realization at this moment. I really really didn't understand how underrepresented people of color were in video games. Um, and as someone who always being, you know, being anti-racist, being, you know, let's get more people included, it, it really kind of showed how much I still have to learn. You know, thinking back, the only black protagonists... I, I ever can really recall playing as was CJ and you know the, the jury's out on whether or not he was a good representation because I mean we can talk CJ and his failings all day long he was you know a horrible horrible person who did very horrible things but he fought you know other horrible people so it's kind of mm -hmm. um and I, I'm thinking back, I served four years in the Marine Corps. I was stationed at Camp Johnson for my uh, uh, MOS school. And it's named after a, one of the first sergeant majors of the Marine Corps who was black, I believe. I believe he was. I'm going to have to double check that. Um, and he was the, you know, the first black Marine to hold the rank. And they, it, they renamed it from Montfort Point, which is where in World War II and up until they ended segregation... Uh, segregated training for black marines that's where the black marines went to train they they all went were sent there they were trained by white marines white drill instructors 
and it was you know it was racist and i'm like you know what where's his story in a game or you know a movie or anything where's those stories and they're you know they're basically drowned out by again you know the majority white stories and something as simple as that really you know helped me open my eyes and realize damn i really really don't know enough about you know the 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 black story in america and um the struggles they face you know i may not be you know well off white but i'm still you know got the advantages of being white you know i'm looked at a little bit differently you know i'm not you know automatically distrusted as a thief or something like that and i think a good and you know in video games it's always always a white person you know the default nord in skyrim white guy the default nord uh, woman white girl you know the default character in mass effect commander shepherd white white let's see uh Oh, Assassin's Creed, white. <laughs> Always been white. You know, the the one time they had a character, you know, in one of their mainline games, not one of their side games, was, you know, when they went down to Egypt. And, you know, the jury's out there on that. You know, a lot of people say, hey, Egyptian, you know, they should be, you know, a darker skin shade. And that's technically true. Um, but they're not, you know, black. So, you know, when is Assassin's Creed going to get a black character? You know, oh, wait, they already had that one in one of their side games. What the fuck? Give it to a main game. Normalize it. Help, you know, actually fight equality. Oh, wait, no, it's Ubisoft. We got to make sure we're actually racist because they're going to use, you know, the black uh, black power symbol and then use that for a terrorist organization in their new Rainbow Six games. Oh, yeah. Ubisoft, you, you think we wouldn't notice that and call your bullshit? I sure did. And if we don't normalize it and, you know, get it right, it's gonna put equality down in video games. And that's the honest-to-God truth there. You know, video games are for everyone. Everyone should feel like they are represented equally and positively. They shouldn't have one of the major representatives be a character like CJ, who's, a, you know, uh, not the best person. He left the gang life, came back, joined the gang again, and went back down the criminal path. Franklin, the another Grand Theft Auto uh, protagonist, who was again black wasn't exactly you know he he had a job you know a legitimate job maybe not the most moral upstanding job who the hell wants to be a repo man but you know he had a legal job he had something but the moment he ended up in a bad situation he went down the path of crime path of crime with a psychopath and a sociopath so and he made friends with them. And, you know, then he became... And I get it. It's Grand Theft Auto. It's not exactly supposed to be the most morally heroic character. But when I'm thinking of black protagonists, I'm often seeing them pushed into these roles of being these morally ambiguous... The decay is bad. And I wouldn't say Franklin is or CJ should be, you know what I would want my child to be upheld to. But if we could get, you know, say the next Assassin's Creed or not even the next Assassin's Creed, um, one of the next main protagonists in any game to be the standard default character, even in character customization to just be black, I think that'd be great. If we could get an actual black character as the next hero, I mean, the jury's out on, you know, the, not the jury's out. It's been proven the next FF16 protagonist is going to look like a white European guy again. You know, but if FF17 could be, you know, a, a black character, and I, the Square Enix can write great black characters, just look at Barrett. Everybody loves Daddy Barrett, and he's black. Why can't we get a character like him? Yeah, sure, he's doing, you know, terrorism and stuff, but... It's based off of an actual thing of an evil corporation doing evil things, not just, you know, eco-terrorism. If you, you know, going based off of the original storyline of what Shinra did to 
uh, Barrett's family and, you know, his his village and destroyed it. I mean, at what point do you just keep, you know, do you say, OK, holding the signs is not working anymore. We're actually going to have to do the fight. We're going to have to fight. And there are people out there who can write these characters. Yet, why aren't they doing it? I think that the I don't want to say that the game's industry is inherently racist, but I think they have some unconscious biases against putting black protagonists in the games. It's because they're like, well, we America is, you know, like 70 percent white. We should obviously make all our games to appeal to white people. Oh, OK, that's a business, I guess. But, you know. You don't have to do that. You had a game like Virginia, which featured, um, an, you know, it was an indie game, and it featured a, a black woman in the role, which they often get left behind even further. You know, black men are left behind as it is. And, you know, then you got, you know, the double standard of a, of a woman being black and a woman, and they just get left behind. And yet this game comes out and never... And, Instantly, everyone was shitting on it because it was a black woman in the role. Why aren't we, you know, trying to fight this? We need to normalize this type of equality because it's not only going to make the games better and make, you know, these communities feel welcome into our into our communities, our lives and make them part of it. But. It's going to help fight the good fight, not even just in the video games, but it's going to fight the good fight for equality in the real world because it's going to normalize the thought process of, dang, this this person is black and this character is black and they're doing these good things. They are the hero. It puts them in the situation to fight against inequality. And that is the key thing. And that is the thing the games industry cannot get right for some reason. They can't get it right with women in games. They can't get it right in their own damn offices. So I think if you start including these people, you're going to start having these issues, not only work globally, but in your offices go down. You know, again, I'm going to shit over Ubisoft here because, hey, Ubisoft, your your shit's out there. It's public now and it's been proven you cannot handle this. And you can't handle it properly. Maybe if you actually get somebody who's actually, you know, black to come in and write a black Assassin's Creed protagonist or write a black Far Cry protagonist, write a black Watch Dogs protagonist, write literally any black protagonist in your games. And you might actually discover, oh, snap, this is, you know, actually a thing. And what I mean a thing is it's actually going to tell their, their stories and their struggles. You don't have to do it in a U.S. setting. You can make it in a high fantasy setting. The struggles for for African Americans can be translated into any high fantasy setting, any science fiction setting, any crazy setting you want, and it's going to tell the story well. If it's well written, obviously, you know, anyone can, you know, write, go in and say they write a story, and then, oh, snap, the story sucked and the writing was terrible. And then, you know, it is it is what it is. But, you know, I'd, I'd give you tr credit for trying. But if you, you really want to do it and you really want to succeed, you're going to put some effort into it. And that's all it really takes. Go in, put some effort, write these characters. Get them right. Help tell the story. Treat you know, give these stories the chance to be told. And don't just say, well, you know, you can translate the story into a white person. Okay, you can. But why? Why does it need to be? Why do? Why does it need to be always a white male protagonist? Let's get some real strong women protagonists. Let's especially get some strong black women protagonists. And, you know, if you're going to say, well, the indies can do it. Well, what, if the indie, if indie games can do it, then why the fuck can't people with, you know, millions of dollars to throw at a project do it? It's not hard. They're just, they just don't want to. And Larian Studios went out there and did it. And 
yeah, it, it's an RPG. You create your own character, but the the fact that just that alone meant so much to one person tells you that these game studios, these developers, need to do it more because it actually shows some results. It you know when we normalize this it it reduces the level of hate it reduces the the evils and it goes and actually makes a difference it's the small things that'll change the world it's not your a bombs your a bombs yeah they're going to change the world your your icbms they're going to change the world you know flight cars petrol fuel everything is going to change the world. But a simple thing as small as this will ripple out. You know, you throw a stone into a river. It's going to make a ripple or a lake rather, not a river. And it'll ripple out. The effect will ripple out and it will change everything. Not I mean, obviously, you know, you know, not obviously the stone in the lake, it's barely going to change, but it's going to make the fish move around. It's going to make them think that their world is a lot bigger than it actually is. And by normalizing African Americans or black characters, rather, because we got, you know, all, you know, you got the black African French, everyone else, but by normalizing these black characters in the game, and every single AAA studio has a large reach. Square Enix. Reaches around the world. Ubisoft, EA, uh, reach around the world. CD Projekt Red, reach around the world. If we can actually get these characters in there, get them written well, make it the default standard, the world is going to look differently. Once you do that, especially, it's going to make a huge, huge change. And if we don't start normalizing it, it's going to not happen. So, and, and for me as a white person, I don't see it enough. I don't see how this can actually, you know, affect people. And it hurts me deep inside because I, I have great friends who are black. And, you know, they often don't like to share the struggle. I don't know if it's because they don't believe I care or whatever it is. But we we need to have these discussions, especially, and um, if we don't get them in there. And I see someone wants to call in. Make sure you move into waiting to be on air. It's 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 in one of the pinned comments. So uh, definitely join on in. But I definitely want to have these discussions. We need to have the discussions. But for right now, we're going to head over to our phone lines for our first on-air caller. We have Tim Aeolian calling in to share the struggle with us. How's it going, Tim? How's it going? <laughs> oh, snap. Um, apparently, we're having a bit of another audio issue with Discord. Yeah, give me like two seconds. You're coming through the wrong headphones because, as usual, Discord just wants to change everything around. Give me one second. All right, all right. Try saying something now. Yo. Okay, there we go. How's it going, Tim? Oh, it's it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You want to share the struggle. Thank you for calling in. So so share it with me, especially normal with the main topic today being normalizing equality and normalizing black characters in video games. I I want to hear your thoughts about it specifically. Oh man, I'm a black female, so like me trying to think of a game off the top of my head where it has a black female protagonist in particular, it's rare. Like, I don't think I can pinpoint one game that has a black female protagonist, but I do know some with black females in them. And of course, plenty of games with black characters and female characters, but not particularly both. Um, But... I had this discussion earlier about representation in games in particular. And while I do think it's definitely important to put more prominent black characters in games, I think people also exclude thinking about characters that are Arabic or Indian or even Asian. Like, can you think of a... That, like, that, 
that's 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 a, a really good point. You know, especially in, in America, you know, if you go down the list, it's it's, you know, primarily white. Then, you know, it's next, I believe, is African-American. You know, I think one of the smallest uh, uh, ethnic groups in America is, you know, Asian-American. Um um, and, and someone's pointing out, I'm, I'm hanging out in FF14 right now, that apparently the co-founder of CD Projekt Red is, Red is black, um, which is uh, news to me. I believe they're based in Poland. So, hey, awesome. CD Projekt Red, the challenge is out to you. Make a black uh, black character be a lead protagonist in one of your games. And, you know, uh, CD Projekt Red, I, I, I really hate your crunch, but, you know, you make good games. So, <laughs> but yeah and, and tim I, I think that goes you know especially to your point is that um you know the struggle for, for equality isn't just for black people and especially getting representation in games you know where's exactly. where's the, the the story of like to uh of uh tatanka yotanka or um sitting bull you know native americans when are they going to get their shot in the games industry you know and like it goes even further than that is if you are going to put characters inside your game they don't necessarily need to fall into the same categories because like there are asians inside of games plenty of them but why do they always have to be inside of necessarily like a historical like asian setting or something like that maybe there's a team of Asians that want to be inside of a sci-fi game or something like that. I would love to see black characters with knights. It's like knights and mages and stuff inside of RPGs, but you just don't see it. And I'm an RPG lover, and I've been saying this for a long time. Why is it that every person of character color, the characters tend to look the same, number one. They always have like dark skin characters with light hair, which is a completely different issue. But when they are, it's like inside these games, they're always inside of like, tribes or they have like a very rough look to them like where's the black princess character well, things I, like that <laughs> I, I think more or less it, it, to me the issue isn't so much willingness it's just uh, um, ignorance they don't have the people in their studios who can go in you know with with the with the paper and rack them on the head and say this is wrong this is this is how you should portray these people you know, especially you go to a company like Square Enix. Uh, Japan is 99% one race at this point. You know, they have, you know, like maybe some Chinese, Koreans, Thai, but they're still all part of this, like the same, you know, rough ethnic group of being from uh, East Asia. And they can, you know, not really, what are they going to know about the struggle of being black? You know, but no, absolutely. And then you get a, a, a game studio like EA that's supposed to be diverse or Blizzard or Activision or God, I'm running out of American game companies. But you go <laughs> to any of these studios or even in Europe that are supposedly more diverse and they can't do it at all. Square Enix wrote a better black character back in uh, when did FF7 come out? 97? Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, even with a character like Barrett, like, he was well-written, but even him, it's like, he was a character that was a main character, but he was also a walking stereotype. He was Mr. T, and unfortunately, there are certain, like, tropes that go along particularly with Black male characters or Black characters in general when they do appear. If you look inside of Square Enix games, if you put Sots from 13 and Barrett from 7 next to each other, they look completely different, but they still fall into stereotypes where they're the loving father trope. Mm. Like, their entire, like, beginning and end of their character depth centers around their child and nothing else. That's something else I've never actually noticed before, but it's also, and you know, it's a good stereotype. I mean, the loving father. You it know, is. We, but it's still just that, you know, and it, 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 it ignores the depthness that is, you know, black people in general. Now, I, with, with Square Enix, I, I, I want to say they kind of can give a little bit of a pass for this because it's kind of harder to bring in African-American culture or uh, South African culture, or Ugandan, or Nigerian, or oh yeah, you know, demic. It, it's harder to bring it into their worlds. It's harder to bring it into their worlds, 
but you can, you know, how much European shit is in a Final Fantasy game? Fuck Quite it. a bit. So <laughs> it's it's not that it's impossible for them to do it. They choose not to because we live in some a very diverse world. Like if Square Enix went on any of their Twitter accounts or social media or anything and said, we are calling black people to give us their points of view so that a way, or even particularly black writers, because they are out there to give their feedback on a character that they're attempting to write. They could get some very good information. But the problem is, is that a lot of these companies as someone that knows a lot of people that work inside of like art dev inside of games, at least, is that your hands are tied. And at the end of the day, they want to sell a game. And it's partially from the consumer point of view that sure, it's like, a black game it's like with a black character will sell but is it going to sell as much as if it was a white main character i mean if it's made by the right people yes i think it would i mean if, if cd project red right now for because we're, we're going back to them quite often um were to announce right now that their next game is going to feature a black male lead um, I think people would eat it up if Bethesda were to do it. I think people would eat it up because they're kind of beloved studios who um, get passes on a lot of their shit because people love them. Right. Um, and like it's, it's partially because unfortunately a lot of entertainment inside of the industry, like people have been saying for a long time now that all they're doing is remaking the old stuff It's because the old stories were good. And mm-hmm. that's what they're off of now like if someone does come up with a good story they kind of don't want to take the risk having a completely different story that they don't know if people are going to accept along with putting in a racial or gender like that they're not sure that people are going to accept i mean look at the ghostbusters movie that they remade with like an all-women cast everyone said oh it bombed because it was women no it bombed because it was bad <laughs> <laughs> i i didn't see it i was not a big ghostbusters fan but i i remember going back to another point uh um battlefield one when it came out there was so much backlash that it had a black man as as you know kind of the the the, the centerpiece of the cover art because black people didn't fight in World War One, And you know what? Uh, for those who are going to make that argument, I want to say crack open a history book or crack open your brain. Because something needs to be they fixed. They absolutely fought in they World War One. They fucking did. You know, the French brought them in from their empire and said, you're going to fight for us now. And then when the African Americans arrived, you know, General, I believe it was General Pershing was in charge. I'm going to have to fact check that. But it doesn't matter. He was so fucking racist. He refused to lead black troops into combat. And the French just said, fuck it. Give them to us. We'll, we'll put them under our command and have them fight for us. And you know what? They did. The Harlem fucking Hellfighters, a great unit with a great legacy, got representation in that game. And people said it didn't happen. Well, guess what? Historical fact, the Harlem Hellfighters existed. They got represented. And goddamn, it took them fucking long enough. <laughs> Let's see. And that's the problem is that there's actually a lot of like black history throughout the world that isn't just oh black people were slaves or black people were tribal inside of underdeveloped countries no absolutely not like it's, it's ironic history, that, but there's more yeah go ahead like it's it's ironic that you mentioned like the french military and particularly because i happened to be looking this up yesterday um just to research uh, the history of slavery in europe and Honestly, there were a lot of very prominent like black people and inventors inside of Europe, like in the 1600s and even before then. But unfortunately, it's like they were an extension of whoever owned them or whoever represented Mm. them and their names got lost throughout history. And unfortunately, that carries over to even now, as you can see that we have an entire rich history full of black people that have contributed, but when you put a black character inside of a game, you get backlash saying, oh, well, this didn't historically happen. It did, but they didn't talk about it. <laughs> it, it, it got talked about, and it, the people who talked about it said, let's go kill them. You know, insert the racial slur, and, which also happened, is they would come back uh, after World War One, you know, with their medals, proud of their service. And, you know, the fucking racists would do what they always do and fucking, you know, be so upset that they 
couldn't do it or they weren't good enough or yada yada and you know fucking just project their own insecurities onto other people who just happen to look different from them and you know if we don't talk about it and i think again when you go into like battlefield one i was so excited to to see that it was a black character in charge and i'll be like wow we're actually gonna get a, a forgotten story of world war one told that's amazing and then they they do it and they fucked it up it was just the introduction piece of all about five minutes thanks ea pretty much and i, I would go even further to say that as a black person I mean, I have plenty of friends that are white or Asian or any other demographic, but particularly among my white friends, um, when we're talking about representation in games, they say, yeah, sure, it needs to happen. And that's pretty much the beginning and end of it. But as a Black person, I don't think they will ever truly understand what it feels like to me to be playing a game or watching a movie and see a character represented. Like, the show the dragon prince on netflix which i absolutely love and i loved it from the second i saw it when i noticed that the king character and his son were black and not just a black son but he was actually married to a white queen and they had like a stepson that was white their son was mixed the king was black inside the other countries you could see different you know like queens ruling that were of different ethnicity even went into different sexualities. And it was just so diverse that I remember being so touched the moment that I saw that Black King and I said, it's a Black character, he's a king, he's not a villain, he's actually a good guy and he's trying to save his people. It's actually his advisors that saying throughout the series, well, we need to do this, we need to attack them. And he's just, no, I actually want to try to win this war through peace. And it just blew my mind because I said, not only is my race being represented, but it's being represented in a positive light. He doesn't want to fight. He wants to bring peace. And even with a character like Barrett, like he wants peace. He doesn't want, it's like the world to constantly be destroyed. He's going about it in a very rough way. But that's just another example about, you know, how you can put these characters in a game and make them positive, like influences for people. And it's definitely something that I think people miss out on is that, when you're writing a black character or Hispanic or Asian, there are going to be certain things that, you know, within the culture you grow up thinking and acting differently from those others around you, maybe from a different culture, but ultimately you just have to write a person. You don't have to think too hard about it of, Oh, well, would a black person think this? No. If you were, you, like you said, like you were inside the Marines, if you saw someone that was injured inside of the field, you would go save them. If you were a black person or a Hispanic person, that wouldn't change. You still have compassion to help someone in need. That doesn't take a brain like surgeon to write something like that. It really doesn't. Unfortunately for, I feel a lot of the developers, it does. All right. Well, Tim, thank you so much for calling in. That's actually all the time we have for this episode in its entirety. I do appreciate you calling in. Um, no problem. <laughs> any any final thoughts you want to share? You got give you a minute on the clock. Don't ask. Oh no, I'm more than happy that you actually invited me in because the second I heard this, I said, you know, you need to get a black person's point of view here because I, it is definitely something I, that I think about all the time. It definitely needs to be brought out more inside of games and media in general. Well, I did try and reach out to the person who actually inspired me to do this episode. Uh, they did not get back to me. And since I don't have the, the permission to use their name, I'm not going to. Again, silence is not consent. Let's get that straight, games industry. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. I think I should rename this episode the Bags on Ubisoft episode. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, Tim. You have a wonderful day. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and wrap up the show. Uh, Dang, hold on. I was kind of like a little bit badly prepared for that. Oh, God. The episode just keeps going to shit. We have all the audio issues. We had Discord being in Discord today. We had everything go wrong that could possibly go wrong. That couldn't go wrong. That is just, well, uh, uh, hopefully, you know, episode three is going to go better. (laughs) 
But, you know, we'll see how it goes. We won't know until, uh... Did I open the wrong... Did I open the... No, no, I got it right. <laughs> and th there we go. It shows how prepared I am. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. All right. Thank you so much for listening to, to this episode of Team Money Talks. If you missed the live show, you can catch me next week on twitch.tv slash t underscore money 33. I'll be talking Final Fantasy 14 again, and I think I have what's going to be a really special episode. Music provided by www.purpleplanet.com. This has been T-Money. Until next time, I'm out! <laughs>